Good morning. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'll let you guys far away, but what an exciting opportunity for the city of Dallas. Um, you know, we had an incredibly ambitious plan uh, to bring the World Cup here, and obviously we talked about bringing the final, and knowing that it was tough competition, right, that, that we had, but we were rewarded with nine matches, which is an unbelievable accomplishment, more than anybody, rewarded with four elimination round games, more than anybody, and we did get that last day of group stage qualifying. So you have five do-or-die games that are going to take place at AT&T Stadium, more so, more drama, more excitement probably than any venue in the entire World Cup. And so this is a massive win for Dallas-Fort Worth, um, massive win for, for you know, everybody involved. I'm so proud of my staff at FC Dallas. They've worked so hard. Monica Paul and the Dallas Sports Commission has been fabulous. Working with the Cowboys, um, the Jones family has been engaged uh, as I've ever seen on anything that's not Cowboys. And you saw Jerry there with us yesterday. That's how important this was to him. And so we get to welcome the world to Dallas Fort Worth to AT&T Stadium uh, for for 37 days of an amazing tournament, and so I feel so fortunate to get to be part of this and get to share this with everybody, all the great cit citizens here, and, and so I think this will be another one of those things. Dallas is no longer a big city in the United States. Dallas is a big city globally speaking, and this just validates that. It was pretty raw yesterday in the moment with a day to kind of what are the emotions now that you guys have had, not quite 24 hours, but getting close to it anyway, to be able to kind of process this all and then look at it through maybe a clearer lens? Yeah, I mean, I, I have such a historical view on these things. I've been in the last 10 World Cups. And in 1994, one United States wasn't quite ready, but did a great job. And Dallas, you know, Cotton Bowl did a fabulous job, but it, it, it was so new. But I remember the rhetoric and the global rhetoric, right? Because I spent so much of my time on this with people saying, boy, you had a quarterfinal in 1994, which, by the way, happened to be one of the greatest matches of all time. Holland, Brazil, 3 2, Brazil on their way to winning the tournament. But people were like, that was a big deal. We didn't, you know, they were like, we didn't know Dallas. Now we're in the conversation for a semifinal and, and nine matches. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you always want more, right? You always want more. Uh, but we did a fantastic job, and we were rewarded for a fantastic job. And I think I would, I would go, uh, you know, yes, we won the final yesterday. But uh, as Dan said, nine matches, it was, wasn't even something that was truly on our, our radar. We were planning for six to eight, but I think – Nine matches shows that one FIFA has the confidence uh, in us to be able to deliver uh, those nine matches, and I think it's a testament of, um, you know, AT&T Stadium, uh, the unity that we show here from a regional perspective. It's going to take everybody to ensure that this World Cup is a, a success, and probably one of the things I'm most proud about is really the entire region coming together to make to get us to this point, and uh, a lot of hard work went into getting to this point, but uh, the work actually begins today as we start to uh, lay the foundation and the path uh, to, to hosting a successful 2026. Just plainly, why do each of you think AT&T would not get uh, Well, I, I can tell you from the standpoint of checking all the boxes for FIFA, I spent a lot of time with them, as does Monica, and they said, look, we checked every box. I mean. Plainly put, I mean, it's maybe reputation of a city in New York, right? I mean, it's, uh, you know, global financial capital of the world. I, there's no other reason, you know, um, that, that I can come up with. And, and you know, it, it's maybe how Europeans think of the United States still. But, again, the beauty of this is I, it, the surprise was already out. Dallas is an amazing place to live because all you have to do is look at the patterns of people moving here and corporations. But now Dallas has established itself as a global sports city even more so because, I mean, you do have the Cowboys and the reputation there and obviously the Mavericks and our world champion Texas Rangers here too. And, you know, FC Dallas is a soccer hub. This place produces – national team players and players that play on the international stage and in Europe, but this just, you know, validates that more. There was, there was nothing else we could have done. I mean, I, I've spent that time, you know, talking to them about it. And Monica, to her credit and her team, did an astonishingly great job. I mean, it was something we should all be so proud of. And that bid was as thorough and, and complete as possible. And so 
I'm just proud. I'm proud to be here with you today and have this moment. And I think I'll go back about 15 years ago when we started the bid for 2018, 2022 World Cup that, uh, you know, they went to Russia and Qatar. I don't think Dallas would have been in the discussion even, uh, even consideration possibly to host a final. So the, the fact that we were a contender, we were in those, uh, um, in those meetings, in those discussions uh, with the FIFA staff as, as a possible host of the final. And at the end of the day, you know, it, it really puts Dallas and the DFW Metroplex on, on a global uh, path moving forward. And I think the sky's the limit. And I think great opportunity, um, even probably opportunities that we don't even see in front of us right now that we have for 2026 and hosting a semifinal. Uh, you know, very similar from an economic impact standpoint and the number of people, uh, whether it's commercial affiliates, teams, uh, sponsors, VIPs, they're all going to be here for that semifinal as well. Just a point of clarity, when they made the announcement that Dallas was going to have the most number of matches, was that y'all's moment of, it's not us? Was that, was that when you knew that it wasn't going to be Dallas for the final? We, we had known at that just before that it, depending if we wound up with nine matches, then there was the possibility that we weren't going. We, not 100 percent sure, right? And so there was still hope that we accomplished something so amazing, nine matches. And all these elimination matches, you thought maybe there's a chance that we still get it. So there, there was a little bit. It, 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 you know, it had dwindled, though. What else I, I'm excited about, and it will come to the draw in the different groups, but geographically, being in the middle of the country with these fabulous airports, we're in close proximity to the U.S. national team on the West Coast and close proximity to Mexico um, in their qualifying group. So, you know, on the off chance how qualification works out, some of these elimination round games may feature the United States or the Mexican national team right here in AT&T. And we'll have to see how the draw plays out, but that would even be a, a grander sort of reward for all the hard work we've put into this. Uh, you know, it, it, it's so funny. It's a great question. Um, no, and, and here's why. We get to share the game with more people. You're talking about between seven and 800,000 tickets that are going to be at AT&T Stadium once we have final seating capacities, right? We still don't know the finals because it has to do with the pitch size and the elevation on the pitch. But... That would be one game, and yeah, the finals are great. But but Monica and I and the re everybody who's been involved get to share this with so many more people having nine, ma even the one extra match, right? That's another, you know, whatever it is, 80,000, 90,000 people that are going to get to see a World Cup match, hopefully, you know, some of them from here, and you'll have a big international presence too, that we get to share with right in our home market and show off Dallas-Fort Worth. Is there any lobbying left to be done as far as the broadcast center Uh, you can jump in and I'll follow up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think we're still in discussions. Uh, FIFA, it's one of the things I think we'll follow up with on this week in terms of what does that timeline look like. Uh, I know there's lots of discussions on base camps, um, you know, locations trying to finalize that, need to get some stuff out uh, to the teams and, and those federations, but that's something hopefully in the next few weeks we'll get a little more clarity on. Yeah, the nine matches helps. Yep. The nine matches, having that here helps us, you know, in our bid for the International Broadcast Center, helps us with the referee headquarters that we hopefully will have here at Toyota Stadium and Soccer Center, um, you know, and it helps with the base camps, right? Because with nine matches, and if we're, we're fortunate enough to land those, plus some visiting national teams, Dallas-Fort Worth is the epicenter of World Cup 2026. There will be no city or no community that has more World Cup involvement-centric things happening than right here in our backyard. Where would you propose that the broadcast center would, would be? Uh, so we're looking at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center uh, downtown. Do you want to talk about what this does long term for the fan base of FC Dallas to build this, uh, like to build the fan base of soccer here long term, and also just to show that we're a sports destination? Yeah, I mean, Soccer in Dallas, I mean, we're the biggest benefactor of World Cups ever because the 66 final my father saw brought to life the Dallas Tornado. The 94 World Cup brought to life the Dallas Burn, who are now FC Dallas. 
what will happen in 2026. If that's what our past looks like, you know, what does the future look like? And we're seeing retro record metrics this year at FC Dallas, record season ticket holders, sponsorship, interest in the club. I would argue that if you looked at the youth club at FC Dallas, it's the greatest generation of players we've ever seen between the ages of 11 and 17. So many of them represent our U.S. national team programs. And so I think just it will continue to build affinity. We want to be your soccer resource um, in, in you know, the state of Texas, specifically here in this market. And we see so many people who want to be involved with World T Cup 2026. And F through FC Dallas is a great conduit to do it. And so this is a great, great moment. People always ask me, what is your biggest hope for World Cup 2026? And I, I, I have a couple. I mean, selfishly, I wanted to grow soccer and professional soccer here. But I hope this moment inspires a young person who might pick another sport to pick soccer who might be the next Lionel Messi or the next Pelé or the next Maradona. If, if that happens and we produce global superstars here for our league because of World Cup 2026, then the sky's the limit. You mentioned the, uh, the final group stage match being essentially a, a knockout game in some, in some form or fashion. I'm wondering about the fourth group stage. Is it, is it possible that could also be a third game in the way that it all – because it's so late in the process? It, it, it could be. Um, and, again, we'll have to wait and see how these draws work out. Um, and to FIFA's credit, originally with it being 48 teams, they were going to go with 16 groups of three. And they decided after visiting with, with television partners that 12 groups of four, because the TV ratings in this last World Cup on, on the final days of qualification were just astonishing. And so for them to reprogram, it took the tournament from 80 to 104 games. But that drama on those final qualification days is unbelievable. It is so exciting. It's so fun to be part of. Can you describe what the next two years of preparation looks like for you all, the kind of work that needs to be done to be prepared for these oh. nine games? Sure. I mean, we've already started uh, working from safety and security uh, across the region. Uh, this match schedule actually helps us to go to the next level now. Uh, I've been working with the North Central Texas Council of Governments on the transportation plan. We've got committees working on human rights, sustainability. Uh, there'll be legacy pieces because I, I feel like that's uh, one of the hugest benefits or greatest benefits uh, to, to hosting a World Cup to be able to leave something behind. And uh, there's a lot of youth and uh, kids that are playing soccer or about to become playing soccer, and we don't have enough fields uh, as it is. So I think uh, we'll get a lot of committee engagement, regionalism, um, and uh, um, have, have a big road ahead of us, but uh, very confident like we have in, in the past of hosting major events that uh, we're going to host the best World Cup ever of these nine matches. Is there a top priority as far as preparations? Um, well, I, I, safety and security for sure, uh, to be able to, you know, the world changes uh, every day. Uh, uh, that'll be our, our top one. Uh, we'll start to ha look at some fan fest uh, programming. The primary fan fest is scheduled to be out at Fair Park, but we want to have ancillary ones that'll take shape at, you know, in Fort Worth, here in Frisco, um, Arlington Entertainment District, uh, other places throughout Dallas to really be able to share the World Cup. Not everybody's going to get a ticket to go to the match, uh, but you're definitely going to feel soccer and the, the passion and the culture uh, of all the visitors coming in and really the far reach of what uh, a World Cup can bring. we got time for two more questions. Just on a human personal level, you guys have put a ton of work into this over a very long period of time. You could hear the emotion in your voices yesterday. You can still hear it today. What has it been like to process Kind of the, the duality of it, that you wanted this, you didn't quite get this, but you still have all this over here. What has that been like to try and process that, just for you both personally? I mean, when you look at something, it, it's not linear in that – you know, you get everything, right? Uh, we knew there was going to be give and takes in this, and, you know, and we knew we were competing against great markets, right? I mean, you, you've got the New Yorks and L.A. as the world. So tough on one side, but at the other side, it's just such a massive win. Um, it's just so big for this city and the, this community. And without 
our ambitions and, and the entire group, I mean, this would not have happened the way it did. It is my belief. But because we did such a great job on our bid, we worked so incredibly hard. The time, the effort, the commitment that went into this, we were rewarded. We really were for it. And so, yeah, it's, it's always going to be a host of emotions. But isn't that the beauty of sports, right? There's the ups and downs and the drama of it, and we got to be part of it. And I still think Dallas-Fort Worth came out as a winner. I'm very proud at the end of the day. Yeah, I get emotional. I don't know, a lot of time has been put into this. But at the end of the day, I get to stand by partners such as FC Dallas, AT&T Stadium, all of our amazing cities. The, the count, I mean, the number of people that have uh, put time and effort into this, and you look at seven years that this bid has been going on, and if you go back and, and look at 15 years, quite honestly, from uh, when we started to lay the little foundation for 2018 and 2022 bid, um, it becomes personal. And I think if it didn't hurt a little bit, it would mean that we didn't do the best we possibly could. And I can 100% stand up here and say that our entire regional partners, everybody put heart and soul into this. And at the end of the day, it's a big win. I mean, to say that you won, you're hosting a World Cup is an honor. But now to say that you're hosting a semifinal and nine matches and who base camps and possible referee, possible international broadcast center. I mean, we have a lot to be proud of. Thank you. you said another way. Is there any way that you get a semifinal if you don't go for the final? There, I mean, I said it. I, I, I truly believe that we got a semifinal and nine matches and four elimination matches really with the great group stage matches because we went for the final. I don't, I don't see that happening any other way. And that, that's a, a, a very, I mean, I'm, I'm truthful and, and, you know, honest answer. That's how I see, saw the world working out. And, look, we all compete here to, to be the best. We compete to win. Right? If you're not going to do that, then you, you shouldn't do any of this stuff. But we did an amazing job. Monica was spectacular, her whole staff. I mean, I say it, she's our secret sauce here in Dallas. Why Dallas-Fort Worth has so many great events all the time. You look up and see the, the regional you know, things that happen and national things and international opportunities that we get to have. We get to have more than anybody. And it, usually when you look at them financially, they're the most successful too. And that, a lot of that credit goes to Monica Paul, her entire staff, and then all the mayors and the council members involved. It is a gigantic team effort, but she's our leader and has brought us together on this. And this is going to be massive. But you're right. Without us, you know, raising our hands saying, no, we want the final in Dallas, I don't believe the greatness that we achieved would have happened.